Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on information literacy. I am Melissa Huang, the information literacy librarian at Western Colorado University. And uh, this brief video is going to go through the basics, right? Uh, we're going to talk about what information literacy is, why it matters, and how it ties into the library, very briefly. Uh, on the other pages in your Canvas module, you're going to see what you need to know about the library and a quiz to show what you've learned. So there will also be a full transcript in the Canvas module so that if you just don't have time to watch a video or you just don't feel like it, you can just read it and get all the same information there. Okay. So information literacy, just like other literacy you may have heard about, like science literacy or computer literacy, isn't literally the ability to read, right? This is uh, sort of a defining term that we use uh, for the skill that is examining and evaluating information, asking questions about your information, and understanding how your own biases and your life uh, up to this point have led you to react in certain ways to different kinds of information. Right? And of course, this is applicable to every aspect of your life. Right? Let's say that you're uh, looking up and trying to research the best furniture for dorm rooms, most essential things that you have to buy to be happy in a dorm room. Okay, If you just pop that into Google, maybe you start to see some shopping links at the top and you notice those are all paid for, it's all ads. Uh, maybe the first three links that you see are also sponsored, they are ads. Um, so you maybe you give up on that and you turn away because you're like, I don't want something that you know someone has clearly paid for, right? Maybe you go straight to Amazon and you start typing in best dorm room essentials or something. Um, you find some really promising you know, products and you click on them and you're looking at the reviews and maybe the top review has gives it five stars, it's super long, includes lots of pictures, it's great, you, you're loving it, and then at the end it says this uh, review is was given uh, as a response to a free product in exchange for an open and honest review, right? And then you go, well, crap, you know, that means someone else paid for this too. You know, if you're getting something for free, it's hard to be unbiased, right, and to give pure judgment, right? So anytime you're using those critical thinking skills and examining, okay, who wrote this review? Do they have any other reviews? Is this anonymous or are they, you know, attaching their name or a public figure to it, right? Anytime you're looking up a restaurant to check out on uh, Google Maps and you're reading reviews, can you tell if it's the owner writing something flattering or someone related to them uh, in response to a ton of negative reviews? How do you tell whether or not it's real? Right? So information literacy connects with leadership, citizenship, and scholarship in all kinds of ways, as you can probably tell. Um, in terms of leadership, uh, a good leader has to be able to separate out their own biases toward or against certain people, right? A good, fair leader doesn't play favorites. They will listen if you're told two different stories, and they'll be able to separate out who is, you know, telling the truth and who is inflating a story to make themselves seem like the victim, right? To be a good citizen, you have to be able to do the research on news articles that you may instinctively agree with or disagree with based on who wrote it, maybe, you know, if you tell me that Stephen Colbert said something, then I'm automatically going to believe it because I like him, right? If I know that my biases are towards a person, I can control my reaction that much better. In terms of scholarship, there are tons of institutes that are actually sponsored uh, by different interest groups, right? So was this research done by someone in connection with, uh, you know, big beef or something, right? You have to sort of dig in into the actual meat of things to find information that's accurate and um, high quality, right? That's information literacy in a nutshell, okay? 
How does that relate to the library? Well, three major things. Uh, we have the tools to help you evaluate information. We have uh, links out to fact-checking sites, as well as videos and guides on how to shape your filter bubble, um, basically who you know exists in your sphere of information, right? So we'll have links to all those, which you'll explore in the next part. And in addition to that, the library provides exclusive information access. So every university in the world, in the country, we buy different accesses to the most you know, relevant pressing research right, and scholarship. We have to pay for that. And the average Joe can't just access that information, right? So you are now part of a group of people that has access that other people don't, right? So how do you use that responsibly? We'll look at that later. And finally, librarians are experts in information. Uh, every academic librarian has a master's degree in library science. Uh, and this basically qualifies us to help you do research in anything that you're interested in, um, whether it's physics and philosophy or you know, psychology and history, right? So we are the experts in getting you to information. So please don't hesitate to contact us for help. All right. I hope you enjoy the next parts of this uh, tutorial, and uh, I hope to see you guys soon. Bye-bye.